Good day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. All right, Saturday morning here in Australia, market cap down again, took a dive as I sort of suspected it would with the weekend. So down 10.2%, so down to $1.5 trillion. So, you know, a far cry from where we were, but that kind of $2.5, $2.7 trillion. But again, the market was seriously overheated and now we're just having a good old correction. And again, yeah, it is what it is. Don't panic too much is my personal advice. It's not, you know, financial advice. I, I never offer you that. But I've been in this space for a while. And again, if you're in good projects, you just got to hold. Now, unfortunately, sometimes it means you've got to hold through some even more brutal dips than what we're in right now. And it means you might have to hold for three or four years before you get back to even. But, and again, this is from my experience, I've, rid, I've ridden out a, a cycle before, so I've done the, you know, full sort of four-year uh, cycle. Even if you buy at its absolute peak in four years, and again, this is if you're in a good project and they don't all of a sudden give up or exit scam or, you know, there's something wrong with it, you're most likely going to be in profit again everything that I was in back in 2017 or at least that I stayed in I jumped in and out of things quite often but everything that I stayed in I just rode out the uh, bear market and I'm up in profit right now even now I'm still up in profit so that is my personal advice to you don't get too caught up in things could we go into a bear market yep look it's possible do I think we're going to no I don't think we're going to what am I doing right now I'm continuing to DCA. That's what I do. I am an investor more than I'm a trader. Uh, and I was just watching uh, Dan Teaches Crypto, uh, Digital Asset News, sorry. Uh, I really like his channel. He he's, seems like a really cool dude. And I love his, well, it's not his saying, but anyway, he says it a lot. Time in the market is way better than trying to time the market. You just got to be in it long enough. And if you just continue to DCA in, again, make sure you do your research and you really know what you're getting into. And if you think they're good and all the rest of it, and you know, don't put all your money into one thing would be some advice I would give you. But if you're in long enough, you're going to make mega dollars based on previous history. You know, we can never tell what the future is going to uh, bring. Things could be different. This market is already different. Uh, it is very different to how any market has uh, played out before. Still similar though, so not completely different, but it is different. But if you hang in long enough, at some stage you're going to make those kind of gains that you think you're going to make. It just may take time. A lot of people come to this space and think they're going to chuck a few, you know, hundred dollars, maybe a few thousand dollars and turn it into a million dollars almost overnight, you know, 24 hours, a couple of weeks, you know, a couple of months. There have been some people that have been lucky enough to do that, but most don't do that. It's probably going to take you a year and you've got to get in at the right time, you know, basically at the bottom and then, you know, be able to ride out that next year to put in $1,000 and maybe turn it into $100,000 or put in, you know, $10,000 and turn it into a million dollars, whatever. It doesn't generally happen overnight. Some lucky people, it does, but that's really it all, all it is, is complete luck. They get in uh, at the, you know, ICO stage, IPO stage, whatever you want to call it. So they get in super early and then, you know, they're in the middle of a bull market and they get very lucky. Most people, it's that way I was just talking about. It will probably take you a year to 10x your money. A full year, maybe even more. But definitely if you're you know, hoping to kind of 100x your money, it'll probably take you about a year. On average, again, some people are lucky and you know they can do it overnight, but hardly anyone. But I can tell you, you can 10x, you know, 100x your money in a year, but... Again, it takes a lot of good work. That's going to be more luck than it will be skill. All right, so anyway, let's move on. 1.5 trillion, so, you know, we've lost uh, over a trillion dollars, maybe 1.2, sort of 5 trillion dollars. I think we're up around 2.7-ish, 2.8 trillion for a while there. BTC dominance hanging in tough, so at 40%. ETH dominance dropping and gas prices uh, quite low. So again, we haven't seen these kind of prices in a long time. All right. 
Has anything done well in the last 24 hours? So all the options have finally ended today. That's what's happened over in the States. And I think we may see some more downside over this weekend. And I think I heard somewhere that Monday is a public holiday over in the States, maybe a banking public holiday or a banking holiday, something like that. I don't know if there's any banking public holidays, but a banking holiday. So really, if the market is going to recover strong, like a lot of people think it might, well, not a lot of people, but some people think it might, it sounds like it won't be happening till Tuesday stateside time. So that would basically be Wednesday for us here in Australia. But all right, has anything done well in the last 24 hours? Helium's done all right. So it's up, Zcash, Theta Fuel, Leo Token. So a couple of really small gains there. And again, only a couple. This is the top 100, considering it's down over 10.2%. I'm guessing we're going to see a fair bit of blood in the streets. Again, maybe a good buying opportunity. You work out for yourself. I know what I'm doing. I'm still buying. And like I said, I'm just going to continue to DCA in. That's what I do, particularly Bitcoin, particularly Ethereum. Uh, I think Cardano is probably going to be part of that now and possibly even Polygon as well. I think they're kind of the four that I plan to just keep DCAing in. And look, on occasions, I may put some money into some other things. I still like Polkadot. I still really like DeFi. So we'll have to wait and see. DeFi continues to drop. I already have a good position in those. Uh, but I may start to put some more money in at some stage. But I really want to see uh, a trend reversal before I continue to put too much money into other things that I just fundamentally believe in and have been around in a, for quite some time. Uh, and I just spoke about those. I mean, Polygon slash Matic hasn't been around for a long time, but I fundamentally believe in what they're doing. And I think they are a really good project. All right, so let's have a look. What's been sort of hit the most in the top 100? What hasn't done well? So there we go, ThorChain engine uh nexo look i mean these are all 20 plus percent dips at the moment but we need to remember they did recover a little bit as well so like synthetics network this is something that i really really like and i am going to continue to buy more just i'm not buying anymore at the moment i have a good position and i've bought a lot of it for much higher than what it is not a lot in the grand scheme of uh how much i have but i've just bought enough of it that i'm sort of at a loss for those new coins still at a gain overall but you know nowhere nearby as much so i am waiting for a bottoming pattern uh and i'll start buying more synthetics network but again look 20 sort of 15 percent basically everything is down at the moment and let's go and have a look at the charts and at least the bitcoin chart that's the one i focus on the most so again this is where we've been as long as we're in this we're still intact we're still moving to the upside we just got to remember we were way outside of this kind of channel for a while and way outside. That's why it got so high and now we all know the Wyckoff, uh, you know, manipulation sort of happened and now we're hanging down here. But if we really zoom in, have a look where it's dropped to and it's almost midnight, so it's about to swap over to the next day. It dropped down perfectly to where it's been dropping down to for a while now. So around that kind of $34,000 level. We haven't gone below yet. That seems to be a really uh, solid sort of point at the moment. We get wicks that come down, but generally 34,000 is where it's selling to and it's just getting bought up. Now, again, I said this yesterday, it wouldn't surprise me if we break down from here and possibly come down to this kind of $27,000 level. It wouldn't surprise me because we, we can see we've been down here before and we've kind of wicked down uh, close to there a few times. And even this wasn't too far off. I mean, this got to 29,000. And then I think we start to travel outside of these bands, outside of this channel for a while, just to scare people. Now, again, there's people talking about the, you know, it could be a bear market and things like that. It, it could be. And I've already told you what I'm going to do. If it's a bear market, I'm just going to continue to dollar cost average because in the end, I believe in cryptocurrencies in general and particularly things like Bitcoin, Ethereum and now Cardano. And again, I think, you know, Polygon uh, has a big future as well. So they're the things I'll most likely continue to DCA in. And then I will wait for a trend reversal before I then start to look to put more money into altcoins. And it's not it dips down and suddenly comes back up to here and that says I'm going altcoin heavy. It needs to be something that's sustained and continues to set new all-time highs. 
I already built a you know what I would consider a good alt size position uh, at around about when Bitcoin was at about kind of 33 34 thousand pretty much where it is now and if it turns out I was wrong and it rolls over and continues to go lower then I'm just going to hang on to those altcoin positions. Most of them, I think, are good fundamental uh, projects. I may sell some because I then believe we're going into a bear trend. But really, we'd have to come well under this $27,000 level before I would do that. And by then, if my altcoins are starting to be in losses, I'll have to really have a hard think about whether I want to sell at a loss or just simply write it out like I did back in 2017. And like I said, those coins from 2017 are still well in profit right now. And I would be surprised if they go into uh, in the minuses, even at the worst of whatever uh, bear market correction this may give up. But, you know, we'll wait and see. But again, I, I believe what I have from back in 2017 is still in good projects. Uh, and I think it'll hold. So I've got some Ethereum. I've got some Chainlink. Uh, what else do I have? Bitcoin. Uh, Kyber Network token. That's basically what I've got from 2017. And so I'll just hold on to them because, again, I bought them uh, at fairly good prices back in 2017. Uh, and they're still done all right now. All right, anyway, moving on. So that's what I'm looking for. You know, could we break out of this channel and come here? come down to here wouldn't surprise me but maybe we just come down to here and then start to do this kind of stuff travel sideways along the bottom uh, of the channel for a while that is what i'm looking for all right sorry i move that there so that's the channel all right so let's have a look at some news stories so the sec look out BitConnect, this was massive back in 2017 and i invested in it uh and lost money as well so you know, it is what it is. That was my very early days. Uh, never got a cent out of it. Just had all my money taken. Uh, luckily, I didn't put too much into it. But SEC, sorry, charges five for illegally promoting two billion dollar BitConnect Ponzi scheme. I mean, this was massive back in 2017. I mean, it was huge. There was, you know, videos all over YouTube about BitConnect. Now, the SEC says five individuals promoted a global unregistered digital asset securities offering. The promoters included Trevon Brown, who is actually Trevon James. He's still on YouTube. Uh, Craig Grant, Ryan Masson, and Michael Noble. So these are the guys that were promoting it on YouTube and promoting it really heavily, and they made crazy money from it like th there was referral bonuses and things like that and they got in early so they were able to take out lots of money now i'm not saying that you know trevor and james or any of these guys were you know knew exactly what was going on but they made a lot of money and they promoted it to a lot of money and so that's what they're being done for for promoting it but in all fairness a lot of people were sort of promoting it at the time but these were the guys that got in super early and made the most amount of money and then because their channels were so big at the time they obviously you know caused a lot of other people to lose their money so be interesting to see what kind of happens uh you know whether there's any real consequences you know because yes they promoted it so you know they're probably going to get in trouble for it but you know we've had famous stars promoting you know well-known scams and you know they didn't go to jail so floyd mayweather dj khaled steven cigar lots of people have been caught up in these things you know because they promote something they don't really know a whole lot about does that mean they're full on you know complicit and guilty and deserve to go to jail I don't know, I guess the SEC will have to make their minds up, but it shows even years later, the SEC uh, is still coming after people. And look, they do need to uh, find, you know, the BitConnect people, and I'm pretty sure they found most of them, but uh, from last time I heard, and it's been a long time since I've heard much about BitConnect, there was still one or two people that the law hadn't caught up with. Uh, it started over in Asia, I think Vietnam, something like that. But anyway, so that's why even as YouTube... Uh, personalities uh, you know we need to be responsible and make sure that if we're you know involved in something that we tell people exactly hey look this might be a scam I don't know uh, just beware and look so far as far as I know I haven't involved I haven't you know promoted anything scammy but I can assure you if I do for whatever reason I'll be the first to let you know that hey I think there could be something wrong here but to my knowledge at the moment I have not done that and I hope to you know never do that 
Moving on. USDC creator Circle snares $440 million in funding rounds. So the cash came from a number of high-profile backers, including uh, Digital Currency Group and FTX, so the platform. So with powerful backers who are committed to our mission and vision, we will redouble our efforts to expand into new markets, continue, uh, continue driving fundamental technology innovation and to grow our team. So USDC, you know, maybe it's going to become, you know, the, the US dollar, I doubt it, you know, the, the official kind of US dollar, because I think the US will want to have something that they completely control, but they do continue to grow and they are fully regulated, which is good. You can be, you know, you can sort of rest assured as, or as assured as you can be that they are compliant with all rules and regulations. Now, Circle works to help online businesses adopt stable coins and send payments. And so this is really going to boost the crypto space. You know, there's a lot of companies out there coming out at the moment saying they're happy to accept Bitcoin. Uh, look, and that's great, but Bitcoin can't scale at the moment. You know, we're not even sure if the Lightning Network could do well enough. And people aren't spending Bitcoin like that. So really, this stable coin space, I think, is going to be absolutely massive. Uh, and I mean, you know, it's easy to send stable coins right now. Unfortunately, the gas fees at times, particularly the ones on Ethereum, are, you know, kind of hamper it. You know, there's a cost to it. Uh, and then there's time that it takes for it to send as well, unless you want to pay an exorbitant gas fee. But we have a num number of other platforms uh, that can do it quite cheap. You know, Ripple, for instance, it's super cheap and almost instant when you do it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Ripple are going through their court case with the SEC at the moment, but it still works though. It's not that Ripple doesn't work, it's just it's harder for some people to buy now. We're lucky here in Australia, uh, it's still easy to buy Ripple and it still works very, very well. Right, more Polygon slash Matic news. Polygon has integrated its blockchain uh, data sets to Google's uh, BigQuery to provide accurate on-chain data for the protocol. Google's big query would ensure that uh, query and in-depth analysis of Polygon's on-chain data are conducted in a simple and organized manner using the Google, pla Google Cloud platform. So, I mean, again, this is why I, you know, I'm happy to continue to dollar cost average into Polygon. They're just building such a big space. Are they retracing at the moment? Of course they are. Pretty much everything is. There's not too many things that aren't other than, you know, helium at the moment. But I think they're going to have a big future. And again, this is that mainstream adoption, you know, they're getting in with Google and things like that. <sighs> you know, really happy that I invested in Polygon uh, and I'm really happy to keep investing, even if the price goes down. Again, I will just continue to dollar cost average in until the price goes up. That is where the really big money is made. Again, going back to uh, digital asset uh, news, uh, the, his quote, so Dan, I should... I don't know him personally, but anyway, Dan, time in the market is better than trying to time the market. I really love that saying. I don't think he came up with it. I'm pretty sure it's been around for a while, but he's the one that uh, really got me onto that. So uh, thank you very much and love your channel as well. All right, JP Morgan. So still at it again. JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon continues with his negative words on Bitcoin and the crypto market by advising people to stay away from them. This, this is absolute market manipulation. He's not saying that to protect you. He's saying that because they're trying to FUD the back out of it so they can continue to buy more at cheaper prices because you go down here. Nevertheless, he admitted that institutional clients of the bank have shown a high demand for such products in recent months. That So he's gonna to continue to do that. They are in the crypto market. This is, you know, again, I can guarantee you, we will find out at some stage they were buying this dip. And I mean, of course they are because they've got institutional clients uh, who have high demand for these products. I believe there is clear market manipulation going on at the moment. They're going to keep the price down for as low as they possibly can. And look, that might mean months to years that this uh, space travels sideways. So they can just continue to build, you know, as big a portfolio as they can in the projects that they like before they finally, uh, you know, 
stop manipulating the market and then let it go to the moon. So for me, I'm all right with that. Like I said, I'm just going to continue to DCA in. I'm not going anywhere. You know, if if we get a bottoming sort of pattern, something sort of like this, an accumulation sort of pattern, I'm just going to DCA into, you know, tons of things at that stage because that will be for me that it's probably going to go up. Now, if it turns around and doesn't, so if we kind of get this and it goes sideways, so we get all this sideways action, and then it starts to drop off, I stop DCAing into the altcoins and I DCA back into just the good coins and I wait for this. But when I see this kind of sideways accumulation, for me, that is my indication that it's time for altcoins and that to get ready to pump. But again, look, it could drop off, could be more market manipulation, but then again, I just, when it's going down, I DCA into the really good stuff. Once I find a bottoming uh, pattern formation, and then things finally start to rise, uh, it's altcoins because that's what makes the biggest gains. Uh, that's my my theory anyway. That's how I plan to do it. All right, so keep moving on. The US, the US Securities and Exchange Commission, so SEC, has urged Congress, Congress to pass crypto legislation to protect investors. And this is what we need. You know, people are against regulation, but we definitely need some. We just don't need over-regulation. The securities regulator is also working with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, so the CFTC, and the US Treasury Department to combat criminal activity facilitated by cryptocurrencies. And this isn't even FUD. There's definitely people out there using it for illegitimate purposes, you know, BitConnect and all of that. It's 100% happening. You know, there's Ponzi's out there, you know, I don't know a whole lot about Safe Moon, but I know I've heard a lot that apparently it sounds like a Ponzi, and that was enough for me to just sort of stay away from it. Although, I probably should do a little bit of research. So I'm fine with this. I don't have problems with this kind of regulation. Now here, we've only been able to bring 75 actions, and there are others currently that are not compliant. So they're still looking. They're going after people. Again, BitConnect was 2016, 2017, and they're finally catching up with those people now. So, yeah, if you're a bad egg and a bad player in the space, watch out. You know, it can be years later and they're still going to come after you. And I'm fine with this. I have no issues with protecting people from just outright scams. Right, last but not least... The financial asset manager, Wisdom Tree, is now the second in institution to file for an Ethereum-based exchange-traded fund following VanEck's recent filing on May 7th. Uh, again, I think there's going to be a ton more of these. This will... It wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if the next, you know, kind of leg up is all based around ETFs. I'm not saying it will be. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. Again, we've already got VanEck's Bitcoin... Uh, ETF, they're going to make a decision on it next month. Now, sometimes the decision can be they put it off for a little while longer. I know they've already done that once with the current one. I'm just not sure if they can do it again and stretch it out for more months again. But maybe a final decision is coming next month. And I think if Vanek gets up, I think a number of other ones get up. And then I think these Ethereum-based ones get up as well. And that may be the catalyst to push things really, really high. All right. So my question for you is, do you think ETFs, if they're finally granted uh, for both Ethereum and Bitcoin, whichever one happens first, do you think that's going to be the catalyst to finally, you know, pull us out of this, you know, kind of bearish trend that we're in at the moment? All right. Can I ask one big favor? If you've, you know, made it this far through my video, can you please hit the like button? I really want to get my videos out there to other people. And the only way that that happens is by someone hitting the like button and preferably, uh, you know, leaving a comment down below as well. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on the gain train at the moment, you've done very well because you've outperformed the market. And I'll see you next time.